If you're in Philadelphia, then you're on American Revolutionary Ground Zero. Independence Hall, the birthplace of the Declaration of Independence, is right in downtown Philly. Inside these hallowed walls are where America's founding fathers feverishly debated the tenets of the world's first constitutional democracy and plotted insurrection against the British Crown. My name is William Watson. I'm a National Park Ranger at Independence National Park in Philadelphia. Now, when you come here to Independence Hall, you're going to see, most importantly, the birthplace of the United States. You're going to see the original building. And you have the room where the Declaration of Independence is debated and signed, so it's the birth of the United States. You also have the room 12 years after that where the Constitution of the United States is debated and signed. On June 14, 1775, the Second Continental Congress, with representatives from all 13 original colonies, nominate George Washington as Commander-in-Chief of the Army and set on the road towards drafting the world's most famous strongly worded letter. That's where the Second Continental Congress took place, and that's where they argued and voted in secret with the shutters closed for that Declaration of Independence. This is the assembly room where independence is debated and declared in, uh, in 1775 and 76. It's where 12 years after that, the United States Constitution is debated between May and September of 1787. Formerly known as the State House of Pennsylvania, Independence Hall most likely got its current name from the French General Lafayette, a man instrumental in helping the colonists defeat the British. He visited the State House of Pennsylvania, and when he came out, he called it the Hall of Independence. So he may be the guy who named it. Philly was like the place to be during the period between the writing of the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. All the greats were there. Jefferson, John Adams, Samuel Adams, Washington, Patrick Henry, and of course, the most famous local. Benjamin Franklin is here for both occasions. Franklin is one of the most revered statesmen, inventors, scientists in the world at that time. It's here for the uh, Declaration of Independence debates for the Constitutional Convention 12 years later. Turns out Jefferson had some help writing the Declaration. There was John Adams, there was Benjamin Franklin, there was Robert Livingston from New York, there was Roger Sherman from Connecticut, and then there was Thomas Jefferson. And Jefferson is probably, of course, the main writer of this document. People know Jefferson as the, as the main author today. Did you know there are over 80 changes to Jefferson's version of the Declaration? He made some final tweaks that really made it spectacular. Jefferson was so despondent because they made so many changes in his document that he did what a lot of us do when we're depressed. He went shopping. He, uh, the best shopping mall went down the middle of Market Street. He bought a thermometer, he bought strings for his musical instruments, and he bought 14 pairs of ladies' gloves. Must have been a presidential sale. He changed the original phrasing uh, pursuit of property to pursuit of happiness, which is a which is a, a very wide opening statement. So he also said the governments are made by people. So if they're made by people, that means that they're ours. That we have the ability to change them if we see that they're not working for us. It wasn't until July 8th, when all the bells in the city were ringing, that a crowd of 2,000 gathered behind the State House of Pennsylvania. And the sheriff came out to read the declaration to the public, the first public reading of the declaration and they went wild. And they stormed through the city wherever they could find the image of King George III. They took it down and they burnt it. They had bonfires going all that night, fireworks going off, cannons shooting. It was a big event. You've heard the phrase, sign your John Hancock on the dotted line. That's because John Hancock's signature is the largest one of the declaration. It's sort of a... Uh apocryphal story that he signed it to where the, that King George III could see it. Now, we don't know if that's true or not. Possibly he signed it. Uh, he signed it first, so he signed his name largest. And it's important to remember that the document wasn't signed all at the same time. 